What's up everybody? Today we're talking about the R5 again. Um, get used to it. It's going to be the next few videos. It's a hot topic. Uh, it's a nice camera. So uh, as you've probably heard, the uh, R5 overheats and uh, I haven't found that to be true yet. And I've done a little bit of testing and I'll tell you just a little bit about that in a minute. But uh, today we're just going to talk about how to prevent the overheating on the R5. Uh, if it does even exist, I still have yet to have it overheat, like I said. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it. What's up everyone? My name is James. This is The Engineering Filmmaker, where we talk about photo, video, travel, and tech. I also have a forum if you want to join that. Link in the description down here, engineeringfilmmaker.com, where we can ask questions, help others, and grow as a community to get going. So let's talk about the overheating on this camera. Uh, for one, like I said the sixth time already, I don't believe it's going to overheat. Uh, it might if you overuse it or abuse it or don't listen to what Canon has to tell you. Uh, I took it outside in the sun. It was about 85 degrees today and I shot 4K 60, 4K 120, and 8K RAW. I kind of intermittently changed the settings, so I shot at 4K 60 first, changed it to 8K RAW, back to 4K 120, back to 8K RAW, back to 4K 60. Did that for about 25 minutes straight. Uh, gave it like maybe five to 10 seconds between taking shots here and there, sometimes even like one second between shots. But it wasn't a real world application in my opinion, I just went out and shot some random shots. So. Soon we are going to get a real world application because I'm taking this bad boy and I'm gonna shoot some commercial work with it. So let's get into how to prevent your overheating um, in terms of what Canon tells you because that's who made the camera and they have engineers who decide this stuff with math, believe it or not. But you really have to listen to the manufacturer on this. So we'll start with 4K 24, 4K 30. If you shoot in the normal full frame 4K sensor, it works fine, no overheating limitations. Same if you were to do the cropped 4K, which is 5.1K over sampled, there's also no issues there. That is to be expected because the EOS R does the same thing, not the 5.1K over sampled, but it does the same thing without overheating. So you'd expect the R5 to do the same. But then when you get to 4K 30, when you are over sampling from 8.2K, then you are limited by 30 minutes, which is the max record time regardless, so big deal. Um, they recommend to use this when you are trying to get footage that is going to be needed to be cropped in post. So this is when you know you need to crop in post or might need to crop in post, you will shoot in this format because it will give you the highest resolution or the best quality because it is oversampled 8.2K. We can do 4K 60, we can do either oversampled 5.1K or we can do full frame, no crop, um, 4K 60, both fine, both limited by heat. The 4K oversampled is limited by 25 minutes. The uh, non oversampled is limited by 35 minutes. The oversampled 4K 60 is example to be used for wildlife or other productions where you may need to have a tighter crop on a full HD production in post. So let's say I wanted to crop in on just someone's head in post, but I'm shooting from really far away. Uh, I can shoot in that resolution and I'll be able to crop in and have really good resolution on my face still. Now, as for the 4K no crop, uh, this one is very similar. It's mainly said to be used just for a higher frame rate. So if you wanted to be able to shoot a little bit higher frame rate in 4K, you would use this setting, but it does not say to use for continuous shooting. It's more or less for short bursts of video so that you are not uh, just sitting there hitting record for 30 minutes in 4K 60. Not really sure why you would need to record something long-term in 4K 60 or 120. Anyway, this is where it gets fun. Uh, and kind of sucks. 4K 120, uh, we're looking at 15 minutes of record time, which is unfortunate because um, that's not that long. However, I don't see anybody needing to record a straight 15 minute video in 4K 120. Now, I, I do not know if it'll be the same if you were to record 15 one minute videos in 4K 120 uh, consecutively, if that would overheat the camera or not, or if it would last just a little bit longer. Uh, either way, I don't think I would shoot an entire wedding in 4K 120. Now, Canon specifically says on their spec sheet for the R5, 4K 120 is specifically meant for short bursts of slow motion video. They're not saying go film an entire wedding in 4K 120 because you're shooting multiple short bursts. They're saying 
you're shooting a wedding, let's say in 4K60 or 1080 60, and you're like, hey, I think this would be a really cool shot to get in really slow-mo. So you pull out the 124K and you get your shot. Or say you're doing a commercial job and you think a shot would be really cool and even slower motion than 60. Uh, so you'd pull this camera out, put it in that setting, and you would shoot a few short bursts of 4K 120. Not to shoot an entire video or production or whatever in 4K 120. Keep that in mind. Now, the big one, 8K in general, raw or not raw, both limited to 20 minutes. And this is the most frustrating one I have seen people talk about. Why'd you get an 8K camera if you're not gonna shoot 8K? Why get an 8K camera if it's gonna overheat? Why blah, 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 blah. Get over it. It's got 8K, it's awesome. No other camera that I know of that's a DSLR mirrorless camera does 8K. It's pretty awesome that this camera can do 8K even though it overheats. Now, think of it this way. This is a tiny camera has zero fans inside of it and it's sealed, weather sealed, especially. Um, cinema cameras who can also shoot 8K or higher, uh, they have fans in them to dissipate the heat. They're not weather sealed, they're huge. They're, they're huge compared to this, they're a lot bigger. Uh, so they can dissipate the heat a lot better. And so Canon specifically says on their website, when you are shooting an 8K, whatever, raw or not, it is meant for, I'll read it for you directly, can be utilized to get unique angles along a main camera. Now, what this means is this is not your main camera. You are not using the R5 as your main production camera. Do not take this camera and, and try to make a full production film that goes in theaters. It's not gonna work. Now, Canon is working on a fan adapter that goes on the front for RF to EF, and that could potentially change that, but, this isn't meant for that right now. This is meant to be a B or C or D or whatever camera, not a main camera. Uh, one example I saw someone say on YouTube, I believe, was you could use this camera when making, let's say, a Fast and the Furious movie and you wanted to get an 8K video shot inside a car uh, for an internal shot because this camera is cheap compared to a 50 plus thousand dollar cinema camera. So this is expendable if you put it in a car that's gonna be crashed. That, there you go. That's gonna be a short shot. It's not gonna be recording for hours. It's gonna be recording for a few minutes before it gets destroyed or you know the car gets hit. But this is meant to get short shots uh, alongside an actual production camera or other camera that can handle the 8K. I'm afraid to ask this, but let me know in the comments down below, would you use the R5 after hearing this or in general? Uh, and what would you use it for if you did buy it? But that's it for today, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to this video. Um, also, feel free to join the forum description below. I would love to start a little community with you guys so that everyone can help everyone. Let's help, let's teach, let's grow. And I'll see you on the next one.